All right, guys, it's been a minute. We're back with a pattern play video. This time we're going to do nine ball. I've had a lot of people ask me about it. There isn't a ton of pattern play to be had in nine ball, but I'm just going to talk through the rack just like we do in eight ball. After this, we'll do an eight ball rack as well just to get some actual pattern play in. Uh, let's do it. So I'm going to start with my typical nine ball break. I'm going to put the ball against the rail at the second diamond. I'm going to move it out about a little over a ball width. I'm going to aim for the center of the, the one ball. I'm going to put just a smidge of bottom, not even a half a tip, maybe like a quarter tip and a little bit of right spin. I'm going to try to put that one ball in this side pocket and make a nice spread and get the cue ball to stop somewhere in the middle of the table. That's the goal. Cue ball did not stop. One ball missed the side pocket, but I did make a ball and I ended up with a good shot. So all in all, it was a decent break, even though it wasn't exactly what I was trying to do. So right off the bat, we got this shot on the one ball, the two balls, the next ball. So let's look at options on the two ball. The two ball may go down there, but it's very tight. I might be able to throw it if I get the right angle, uh, meaning I might be able to hit the two ball so it aims towards that point and use right spin to throw it to the left. I may be able to do that, but let's look and see if there's anything else. The only other shape I see, I would have to get behind the two ball here to make it in the side. Um, the combo here is so, I mean, it's possible, but it is such a thin cut to get that eight over there. And I don't like trying for that. The other thing I could do here is put draw with left and try to hit this rail here, come out and put some separation on those. Problem with that is I don't know exactly what I'm going to end up with on the two ball. So let's take a peek and see what we can do here. I think I'm going to run into it, guys. Only thing, only reason is because this four ball is kind of in the way. So if I try to get this perfect shape here to shoot the two down there with throw, there's a good chance I'm going to end up hooking myself. Uh, and I don't want to take that risk. I would rather take this risk of bumping into it. I feel like it's a smaller risk. I feel like the chances of me not getting perfect on that four are high. And the chances of me making the breakout with something after are a little bit um, better. <laughs> so let's, let's do it that way. So I'm going to use bottom with a little left on the cue ball. Got some separation. I got unlucky here, man, because the seven's in my way to make that cut. I might be able to spin it just a little bit, which is probably what I'm going to end up doing, it looks like. So I know it's hard to tell from your camera angle, but here's where that's as far as I can shoot without hitting the seven ball right there. So that's going to put the two ball right about here. So if I put some left spin on the cue ball, I may be able to throw it into that pocket. It's my only chance. And that should bring me over for a shape as well because the left spin is going to come this way down here and back over in here for the four ball. Or if I hit it harder, I may end up bouncing behind the seven. But my goal here is just to focus on making the two. Uh, the four is in the middle of the table. So chances are I'm going to end up with a look at the four. So my goal is to make this two. It's not an easy shot. I could bank the two as well. Let me look at that for a second because that may be a better option, more controlled. If I bank the two, the only thing I can put on the cue ball is top. So that means the cue ball is going to run into the eight. There's a chance I could double kiss the two on the way back, but I don't think I will. I think what, what's going to happen is the two is going to bank. The cue ball is going to hit the eight and come over into this area. It's going to leave me probably a good cut on that four here, which is good because that sends the cue ball towards the five. I, I like this plan better, guys. I'm going to do it. I'm changing. I'm not going to try to throw the two in anymore. I'm going to try to bank the two. That'll work. That will work. 
All right, now I'm against the rail, so the only thing I can put on this, this uh, cue ball is uh, follow, uh, which I don't really like because my tangent line to make the, the four is, oops, my tangent line to make the four is here. So with follow, I'm going more towards the five. Now I'm safe as long as I don't hit the five on the right side and scratch. If I hit the five on the left side, or even accidentally hit the five and make it, the six is right here, so I'm still gonna end up with a shot. So I'm gonna lift the back of the stick a little bit, not a lot because it makes it a lot, lot less accurate when you do that, but I'm gonna lift it a little bit to try to negate some of that follow and make sure I don't scratch. Okay, I missed the four altogether. That's because I lifted the back of the stick. I got lucky and made the five, um, but look where the four ended up. So if I'm going to continue this run, I need a miracle shot here. Ah, man, oh man. I'd like to try to bank the four here, but I think the cue ball is going to get in the way. It's going to double kiss unless I can draw off of it enough to get it out of the way. Well, I think that's really all I can do, guys. If I were playing a real game here, I might try uh, a safety of some kind. Maybe just nick the four and send it against the rail and put the cue ball up here, uh, making sure this combo isn't lined up. It's not really a safety, it's more containment. But I mean, these pattern play videos, it's always fun to try to run out. So that's what I'm gonna do. Now I'm gonna put left spin on the cue ball that way I can hit this ball, instead of hitting it here, I can hit it more like this and get the cue ball out of the way a little faster and the spin will throw the four ball more towards the pocket. So I don't know if this is gonna work, guys. This is a, it's a very low percentage shot, but it's really what I'm gonna try, so let's do it. No, nope. am I going to get lucky on the two times? I sure am, guys. That's the way nine ball works, though, man. You get lucky, you get lucky, you get to keep shooting. You know what I mean? It's not like eight ball where you got to call everything. You can get lucky in nine ball, which I just demonstrated twice. Not once, but twice. All right, so now back, back to the table here. I've got a tough cut on that six. That's not easy at all. Uh, the good news, though, if I just put a smidge of left, I'll probably use a little top left. The cue ball, I'm going to try to get the cue ball to hit before this side pocket. Come down in between the 8-9 and over here, I can hit it soft for a shape to shoot the 7 up. Or I can hit it harder and try to come up here for the 7 down. I think I'm going to try to come up in this area. It's harder uh, to get that shape because there's a chance I'm going to run into the 7. And if I do run into the 7 from the bottom... It's not a big deal because it pushes the seven this way, cue ball stays down here, and I still end up with a shot. So that's, I'm gonna take the risk and, and try not to bump into the seven, but there's a good chance I may. But first things first, I gotta make this tough cut. Okay, I ran into the nine, not the seven. Yeah, my uh, my stroke just isn't isn't where I'd like it to be lately, guys. You know, my my accuracy is down. It has been for about a month or two, and uh, just is what it is. So we're doing the best we can. See if we can make this seven somewhere, guys. This is what you call a grinders out, right? Because it's not going according to plan. I'm getting lucky, but I'm just grinding it out. I'm, I'm keeping, you know, keeping hope alive, trying to make them. Now I got two choices here. I can either thin cut this all the way up, which is a very difficult shot, or I can try to bank it here, which is also a difficult shot because this angle, if you look, this angle going in is going, to, it's supposed to come out to like around here. So in order to make this here, I've got to put a lot of spin on the cue ball to tighten the angle on the seven. And it makes it tough, but honestly, my, my instinct is leaning towards the bank here, guys, even though it's probably the wrong play. Um, 
I just feel like I like it better. So that's what we're going to do. The shape should be fairly natural here. I'm just going to put a little draw. I'm going to hit it here, and the cue ball should drift over this way, hopefully not double kissing on the seven. Needed a little more draw, guys. Needed a little more draw. All right, I still have a shot, but once again, not an easy one. You know, this is what happens in nine ball. You fall out of line, and uh, you spend the rest of the game either getting further out of line or getting slowly back into line. And so far this game, I've been getting further out of line. So it is what it is. I mean, bottom line, that's the only ball that counts. So as long as I keep grinding through the rack, I may still win this one, you know? I may still win it. All right, so I'm going to cut that eight in. Uh, the shape is pretty standard. You just go back and forth, center ball, no English on this. You just got to get the speed right because you're going to hit here, then you're going to hit here, and you don't want to end up over here. You want to make sure you end up over there, obviously. Oh, I overcut it, guys. Well, that's the end of that nine ball run, guys. You know, the opponent's going to step in, make an easy finish. Easy finish here for the opponent. And we lost this one, you know. That's uh, a couple bad shots. We got out of line. A couple bad shots. We tried our best to get back in line. We just couldn't do it. And that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes, so. Let's move on to eight ball. I'll rack them up and see you at the break box. All right, boys and girls, we got the rack all prepared. Uh, let's break them up. My eight ball rack is very similar to my nine ball rack and the fact that where I put the cue ball is almost the same spot. In eight ball, I put it against the rail and move out almost exactly one ball. I go a little further in nine ball, but not in eight. So in eight ball, instead of hitting this first ball, I'm going to aim for the second ball back. Put just a touch of bottom and some right spin on this. Uh, my goal is to get the cue ball to come off this rail and back into the balls. I don't, I don't recommend this break for a nine foot table, guys. Um, it doesn't work as well on, an, on a seven foot table, though. It's a great break. And the reason I use it mostly is because if there's any gaps in the rack, it still breaks, it still breaks well. When you hit the head ball, if there's gaps in the rack, they don't spread. And with this, this break in particular, if there's gaps in the rack, it doesn't affect it a ton. Made one. Made one. All right, we're playing tap rules. Open after the break. Doesn't matter what you make on the break, still open. So looking at this table right off the bat, this is my problem right here. So I've got the three, one, and 15 are all locked up in there. Now, if I'm up in here somewhere, I can make the three. Um, and I could use that to hit this and break out the one. So that's not too bad, actually. Um, but the two ball is also in trouble if you take solids. Um, but you got to figure out a way to get to the eight anyway, which if you take stripes, you can shoot the eight up into that corner. Um, you don't have to necessarily shoot it in the side. So... It's just a choice to be had here, which ones to go for, right? The 13 is kind of in a tough spot because it's very tight if it goes at all to shoot it past the four there. So you kind of have to shoot it this way and that shape is tight. So honestly, the run out here I like better is solids, um, but they both have challenges, guys. Both of them have challenges, but I like the solids better. I just got to figure out a good way to get to that two ball. Let's get a couple of ideas in our head if we can before we start to shoot. I'm drawing a blank, man. Comment if you see a good way to get to that two ball. Because I'm not seeing one right now. I mean, the only thing I can think right now is just when I make the six here, come up for the seven and leave myself an angle and then draw down. 
and try to open it that way. But that's going to move these as well, and it could end up causing me more problems. But I don't see another good, great way to do it, really. So instead of hitting this light and leaving myself up here, I'm going to hit this a little bit harder and come down here, and then I'll play the 7 with top and come off the rail down into these. Because if I can move that nine ball, then all of a sudden the two ball's got a couple pockets. I could shoot it here. I could shoot it there. Um, problem is I don't know for sure if I'm going to come away with a shot, you know. And I'm going to have both of my balls gone up there. Yeah, it's, it's not easy, guys. It's not easy. Let's take a look at these stripes a little bit. I just, I really don't like the 15-13 on the stripes, man. Otherwise, it, I would definitely shoot stripes. 10 goes in the side. I can start with the 9 or the 12. If it wasn't for the 15, 13, I would take stripes. If I were a better player, I would know how to get those out of there and go with stripes. But I'm not. So here it is. Let's do it. Don't want too much angle now. I did get quite a bit. I mean, the good news is, as long as I can make my shot, I should definitely come straight off this rail and back down into the nine, but now my shot's pretty tough. I wanted to be a little bit more over here so the shot wasn't so hard. But time to stop crying and buck up, you know what I mean? Oh, don't get my three in trouble. All right. Well, shoot. I opened up the two ball like I wanted, but now my three is in trouble. I might still be able to throw it in. I don't think so. I think the 15's in the way. Let's get a good look at it, though. Yeah, the 15's in the way. The only thing I might be able to do now is get this angle here and play it off the one slowly, or I could set up for the four. And move them again you know it's really it's what i'm what i'm looking at right now is shooting the five up here leaving the cue ball right in this area and then making the four with center and come up and hitting that little pile of balls again rearrange the furniture so to speak it's not the best way to play it guys you don't want to move them around a bunch like that um but man it's what i got it's what i'm gonna do the only other option is to try to get back in here shape the one back down in here and come this way, you know, make the one here in this pocket and send the cue ball this way. And honestly, I don't like the, the idea of trying to get that shape in here. So, all right, let's, uh, let's solve the problem we just made. I'm going to make this one with bottom left because you see where hitting it straight goes. It goes straight up that way. So I don't want to necessarily cut it this much because then my cue ball is going to drift way over here. Um, so I'm going to hit it almost straight. So instead of aiming it there, I'm going to aim it like here. So the cue ball only drifts a little and I'm going to, I'm going to throw it the rest of the way with spin. All right, now I got that angle that I wanted. Now, <laughs> I don't know exactly what's going to happen here. My goal is going to be to hit the, as I'm looking at the one ball, the left side of the one ball here. That pushes the one ball over into the 15, and the one ball drifts this way. It opens the three, and the cue ball drifts up here. So I end up with a shot on the two or the one, possibly even the three. That's going to give my 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 mind is going to give me the best option to come away with a shot here. So let's see what happens. Okay, it worked out pretty well. I think I'm dead on that too. And I know it probably doesn't look like it on the camera, but I've got... I've got plenty of space to not double hit that. And I definitely want to take it now 
um, because otherwise it becomes a trouble ball again because it's not easy to shape and right now I'm shaped on it. After this, I can make the three or the one. Um, I just need to stay in this area. I'm, I'm, I'm liking to stay right here, shoot the three with a stop and then shoot the one. Um, <clears throat> then I can shape the eight, either spin out here for the eight or I could follow up for the eight in this side. But let me shoot this two and get shapes on that three. All right, I came a little further than I wanted. Came a little further than I wanted. That makes this a lot tougher, guys. So I still got to shoot the three first, but now I got to drift the cue ball over here for the one next. So I should end up with an angle on the one to be able to come off this rail and back over for the eight. But I got to focus on this, this three ball because it's got a very narrow window. I mean, it, it barely fits through there in order to make it. And now I'm at an angle, so it makes the shot pretty tough. Not sure I ended up with an angle on this one. Not much of one. Uh, not really an angle at all. Jeez, oh, Pete, man, it just keeps getting tougher and tougher. So here's my, my options. Do I try to draw straight back off of this rail and out into here? Or do I just draw straight back into here, right? This is a little more controlled, but also a little more touchy. If you're feeling good about your stroke and your speed, then this one is a better option. But if you're struggling a bit like I am, it might be better just to let your stroke out and draw it all the way back. Oops, I just hit the cue ball. That's a foul, technically. Uh, draw it all the way back into this rail because your speed is less crucial. Even if I overdraw it into here, I still got a shot. If I underdraw it over to here, I still got a shot. If I really underdraw it, I end up in this gap. So when you're not feeling great about your stroke and your speed, it's, this shot's better, you know. So that's the one I'm going to take. There it is. That worked out pretty well. Pretty okay, you know? All right. Self-explanatory from here. Eight ball side pocket. After this, let's run these uh, stripes in rotation. We'll start with the nine. So I'm going to stun up and shape the nine to this side pocket. And uh, from there, I should have a stop shot on the 10 down here. Okay. I was supposed to stun up. Instead, I didn't aim it exactly right, so I ended up stopping the cue ball because I hit the, the object ball too full. All right, so now we got to change our mode of plan to get on the 10. So instead of, obviously, instead of shooting this straight with a stop shot and leaving the cue ball here, I've got an angle that's going to send me this way. So I'm going to put right spin, just a little bit of right spin, so I come off this rail, this rail, and then more straight out in the middle of the table here. If I don't put that right spin, then off of this rail, I come over this way. See, I still, still didn't hit it right. Didn't hit it right, but I ended up with a shot on the 10. So from here, I'm going to put center with a little left. I'm going to bounce off this rail and spin up here for the 11. Oof, overhit it, guys. My stroke is struggle bus lately. And I got to try to cut this 11 unless I want to shoot that combo, which I do not. I'm going to try to cut the 11. Cue ball's on this angle. So what I got to do is put right spin so I can hit here and come back up this way for the 12. Otherwise, I run into that 13 and I'm in a world of trouble. But putting that right spin makes this shot a lot more difficult. So pray for me on this one, fellas. Pray for me. <laughs> I 
I'm not even close, guys. All right, that's it. I'm cooked like a goose, buddies. I'm cooked like a chicken on Thanksgiving or a turkey on Thanksgiving, whatever it is you crazy guys eat out there. Well, listen, guys, I appreciate you sticking around for this pattern play video. I know we haven't done one of these in a while. I'm rusty on them. My stroke itself is rusty. Man, but I appreciate all the support and love out there. If you guys want a short rail hoodie, don't forget the link is in the description, guys. If you want one of these sweet perimeter lights, which, by the way, I've been playing on for a few months now, and I still absolutely love the light. I played on the Predator lights. Uh, I used to have a Littman light. This is just as good, if not better, than the Predator light. It's a little cheaper, and if you use my discount code, it'll be even cheaper yet, guys. The Littman light was good, but it just doesn't compare to the perimeter light. The Littman light's a center light, and the feel is completely different when you're playing on the table. The perimeter light's where it's at, guys. If you want one, use my code, save some money, and it helps me out. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.